So let me ask you this question. If I'm going to store some numbers, let's say up to 100,000, how big of an integer do I need to make in Python? I don't have to make an integer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They just are there. They're just there. It's beautiful, right? But <laughs> I know that you've done a lot of C and C++, and, and I have as well back in the day. And you used to have to really think about that, right? Like if you saw a negative 32,000 for a number and you thought you were adding to it, you're like, oh, it was a, a short and it overflowed. Darn. Well, I guess it's maybe it should be a U short, an unsigned short. It could be, it could hold up to 65,000, right? Like this is something yeah. you always had to think about. And in uh, Python, you don't. And how that happens is pretty interesting. I didn't really know the internals. I kind of guessed maybe something like what's happening was happening, but I, I didn't know. And so there's a cool article by Arpit Bayani, and he wrote it something called How Python Implements Super Long Integers. So for example, if you tried to take two and raise it to the power of 20,000 in C, you would get infinity. <laughs> <laughs> All right, back because it's well, it's bigger than we can hold it, so it must be infinity as far as we're concerned. But in Python, it's fine. It just gives you a six thousand and twenty-one digit integer, and you don't have to declare like I'm working with really big numbers or anything like that. And so Python is pretty cool in how it's transparent with these, right? Yeah, yeah. Huh. So this article digs into the C Python source code. It talks about the algorithms and the data structures that make this happen. So basically, uh, the numbers in Python are represented as what's called a pi var object. So pi object, those that's the core type of things in Python. But this is a variable length one, right? And so there's a, a couple of different types that are like this. Um, we've got lists, we've got tuples, but we also have numbers. And that indicates that they can be of different size and they can basically grow as you, as they need to, right? So Python's numbers ultimately are represented by this thing called a, a long object. And that has a pi object base, but then it also has a size and a digit. And these digits are, I think they're four, four or eight bytes long. I can't remember, it doesn't say here. Uh, it's a macro that would expand at four or eight, something like that. But Basically, it uses a list of digits, and it, you know, initially it just uses one of those, but then when it gets full, it adds another and another and another. And what's interesting is they're base 230, not 10, not 16, 230. That's weird. Okay. Yeah, because apparently it can most efficiently use that's exactly that space okay. of, of its four bytes or whatever. Uh, as individual el elements in, in a base. So it's it's pretty interesting. Like there's this ginormous number. And if you were trying to represent it in base 230, it's 100. <laughs> I, I'm not going to read it off because it's really, really long. But it's pretty interesting how it uses this. But then when you get into operations, right, if I'm going to add two numbers and they're base 230, like what algorithm do you do? They're not, it's not like base 10 <laughs> where you normally do the thing. So, or or division or something. So that's also interesting to think about. If you look at arithmetic, it's pretty straightforward. You just add within the digits, and if you overflow 230, you do a carryover like you learned in elementary school. Subtraction is like you do the borrow, so it's like reverse. But then multiplication, in order to keep things efficient, uses a, an algorithm called the Karastabua algorithm, which okay. is an a interesting way to multiply two in-digit numbers <laughs> Uh, in, in different bases and stuff. And yeah, so it's, if you've ever wondered how come you don't have to worry about numbers overflowing in Python, here's a cool look inside that at the C Python source code and some of the algorithms. That's amazing. Yeah. Actually, that's pretty cool. <laughs> it is pretty um, cool. I'm so glad I don't have to worry about it, right? It's just, it just happens. Yeah. Well, that's one of the one of the definite benefits of Python is this, this notion of, uh, you know, developer time is way more valuable than computer time. So let's figure all this stuff out for everybody else. And then we can stop thinking about it so much. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But I had a, um, so my, I had a, a project many years ago where I had to work with a, uh, an FPGA and the clock system was, uh, such that, um, each, the, the timing had the, to set the current time had to divide that out for 
um, a multi-radix um, number. So it wasn't like base 10 or base 230. It was each digit had its own base. Um, oh my goodness. That's crazy. Yeah, it was, it was, uh, <laughs> it was, it was a kind of a beast. It was cool, a uh, cool algorithm, algorithm, but it was a, a fun thing. Anyway, yeah, yeah. love this sort of stuff. Yeah, this is really cool. A cool uh, glimpse behind the curtain, a little bit of the red pill. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you go yeah. down inside, see what's happening. One final comment here is there's there's some funny little tricks you can play on people to ask. You can like create the number 10 and then create the number 10 somewhere else and ask if those are the same number, like with the word is. <laughs> it's true for small numbers, but it's false for large numbers. And that's because Python pre-allocates the numbers negative five to two hundred and fifty-six. Oh wow. Okay. So when you when you have a hundred in your program, it's the same hundred everywhere. But if you have one million two hundred and twenty six thousand four hundred and eleven, that was made on the spot, right? So because these are pointers. These are not just like four bytes on the stack. These are these are getting hmm. allocated in complicated ways each time. And so they said, look, negative five to 256. We use these all the time. Let's just make them when Python starts. Why minus five? <laughs> well, because who uses minus six? Come on. I, don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. I can, see, I can see minus one and zero to 256. But beyond that, I, I don't really know what they must. They must have some reason. <laughs> I, yeah. I don't know why. Yeah. Somebody, somebody, they probably started with negative one. And somebody said, well, let's do mi minus two also. Oh, let's, let's, let's go hog wild and go all the way down to minus five. Thank you for watching this segment of the Python Bytes podcast. This video was made during the recording of the full episode. Visit pythonbytes.fm and get the whole story. Subscribe to the podcast and get the entire episode delivered to your phone. Please support our work by taking one of the courses at pythonbytes.fm slash courses or learning PyTest with Brian's book at pythonbytes.fm slash PyTest. Finally, visit our sponsor shown on the screen here. Visit the link on the screen and get the special offer for Python Bytes and YouTube listeners. Thanks, and have a great rest of your day.